Hello and welcome to Ionic Tips Weekly, episode one, uh, the weekly Ionic show where we cover one small tip each week uh, to help become better Ionic developers. Today we're going to be taking a quick look at diving into the documentation. And so a lot of us, as we begin learning Ionic or anything, uh, really, uh, our first point of call a lot of the time is to do a Google search and end up on somewhere like Stack Overflow or the Ionic forum or on uh, blog posts like the ones uh, that I release and that a lot of other people write as well. It's often an easier way for uh, people who aren't familiar with the tools they're working with, with the framework. Uh, it's easier to look at uh, examples that are taught through rather than looking at the documentation directly sometimes. Uh, but in this video, I want to give a quick introduction to uh, how we can use the documentation to keep ourselves from getting stuck. And I guess just highlight that uh, once you start getting used to navigating around the documentation and even the source code, uh, it's not that intimidating to use. So if you're running into some problem, first of all, uh, the documentation should be your first point of call. And so I've got the documentation for the beta uh, of the Ionic 4 framework up right now. Uh, so some of this isn't actually uh, fully complete, uh, but that's actually a good thing for this example uh, because I want to talk about looking at the source code as well. So to start off with, uh, let's say we're going to use an, uh, an alert or alert controller for this example. So say we're having some trouble using the alert controller. We're trying to launch some alert. It's just not working for us. So the first point of call would be to come to the documentation and head into the component section here. And you'll see a little entry for the alert right here. This isn't of much use to us because it doesn't really describe how to use it. But if you click on this API button here, that's going to take you to the API docs for that particular component. And we're going to be able to see a lot of stuff uh, that we can do with it here. And so this in itself is usually quite useful. You'll find uh, usage examples here. Uh, so you could just basically just copy and paste this example. Uh, but you can also read through what the various uh, methods and uh, properties do. And you'll also find a list of properties down here and the types that those properties are expecting. So we can see here uh, the CSS class, for example, is uh, expecting a string. Uh, so a lot of the time, the information you find in here will be enough. Uh, you won't really need to dig any further than this, but I do want to talk about getting into the source code as well. And so once I started being able to uh, dive into uh, the source code behind frameworks that I was using, uh, there's sort of a point in time where I felt like I improved a lot and I stopped getting stuck on things because uh, sometimes documentation will be wrong or it's not fully completed. Sometimes you won't be able to find anything on Google about what you're searching, uh, especially with something like Ionic right now, where you know it's just recently been updated to Ionic 4. So there's not going to be a whole bunch of content out there uh, just yet. So if we can't solve our problem by looking at documentation, the next step that we can take is to look at the actual source code uh, behind what we're using. So you can come to the Ionic GitHub repository, and this just has the source code for Ionic itself. Now, looking at the source code is going to be a little bit more confusing and intimidating than the documentation or, or blog posts. But the answer for whatever problem you're having is buried in here somewhere. Uh, since this is the actual code that's running Ionic, then, then at, uh, at some point in this repository, you're going to see the code that's actually doing the thing that you're trying to do. I guess the problem is trying to track down where that is exactly. And so being able to find where things are in this repository uh, does, I guess, a little bit come from just getting used to looking around uh, it a little bit, uh, getting used to where things are. Uh, but a lot of the time, what we're going to want to look at is the core folder here. And the core folder contains all of Ionic's web components that we're using. So if we just click on the source folder in here, uh, you'll see a few different folders in here, but mostly what we're interested in is the components. Uh, it might not always be what you're interested in, but a lot of the time it will be, especially, again, if you're looking into how to use the alert component, then you would come into here and you'll find the alert and alert controller inside of this folder. So let's just click on alert, for example, and we'll see what you know what's in here. So there's a few different files and folders in here. Uh, generally, what you want to look at is the TSX file. Uh, so now we're getting into stuff that was built with Stencil. And so that's how Ionic builds their web components. So what we're looking at now is Stencil code. It's not, it's not Angular code anymore. And so as I've mentioned in the past, you don't need to understand Stencil to be able to use Ionic. Uh, but if you want to actually look at the source code behind Ionic here, uh, you will have to be a little bit familiar with Stencil. Uh, fortunately, you can sort of get by without knowing it at all. 
Uh, the syntax is very similar to Angular, and a lot of the time you don't really need to understand fully what's going on. You just need to find some keywords that will identify what you're trying to do. So in a hypothetical example, let's say we're actually using uh, the alert controller to try to create an alert. So we'll make that our first point of call here. We'll go to the alert controller, and you can see here the little snippet from uh, the documentation uh, that explains its basic usage here. But if we actually open up that TSX file, we can start to see how this alert controller is implemented. And so you can see here we have three methods to find on this alert controller. We have create, dismiss, and get top. And so we're probably already aware at this point that there's a create method. That's probably what we would have been using and it's not working for whatever reason. And so now let's say I want to investigate this a little bit more. Uh, I want to understand why what I'm doing is wrong uh, and why it's not working. And we can see that this create method here takes in an options parameter, which is of a alert options type. And so at this point, it'd be a good idea to see what, what is the alert options type? Or what does this method accept exactly? Maybe that was our problem. Maybe we were trying to supply options that didn't exist. Uh, so in this case, we'll see that alert options is coming from up here. We're importing alert options from uh, the interface file, which is two folders up from here. So let's open that. We'll open up that interface file and we'll see if we can find alert options. So we can see that uh, the alert interface here is uh, being exported uh, from uh, this file here. Uh, so again, we'll just go back. We'll go to components, alert, and then alert interface. And in here we can see those alert options. And so this is you know, basically what was in the documentation. So in this instance, we probably wouldn't need to see this. But if we were trying to look at something that wasn't documented uh, or that had missing properties or something like that, we can now see that this is the full list of options that the create method for the alert controller will accept. So we can see we have a header, which is an optional property uh, as a string. Uh, all of these are optional. And you can see uh, here as well what the type is. So Subheader expects a string, message expect, expects a string, so does CSS class. Uh, we have a few things that expect Booleans here, so true or false. Uh, and that includes backdrop, dismiss, translucent, animated. Uh, so at this point, our problem might be solved. We might see that, oh, this is the thing that I wanted to supply. Uh, I'll just use that uh, property name instead. Uh, but that might not solve our problem. We might be wondering, well, uh, what does this property do, for example, translucent? Uh, you can probably guess from the name that it has something to do with opacity. Uh, but we don't really know what this is doing just yet. So let's try diving a little bit deeper. So if we go back to our alert controller file here, we see that the create method that we're investigating uses this create overlay uh, method, and it's supplying that with an ion alert element and uh, the options that are being passed through to the method. Uh, so again, let's do a bit of investigating and see where this create overlay is coming from. Uh, so it's being imported up here from this utils folder. Uh, so again, if we go two, two folders up and we go to utils overlays. So there's the utils folder there. I'll open up the overlays uh, file. And now we can see that uh, create overlay function that's being imported. And again, it's not impossible to, to fully understand what's happening here. We're just trying to kind of find our way through the code piece, bits and pieces together, and try and find something that is relevant to what we're trying to do. And you can see at the start of this create overlay function here, uh, there's a, a comment here that explains that uh, the we are converting the past in overlay options into props uh, that get passed down into the new overlay. And so that's what this uh, code is doing here. We have an object or assign element options. So we are assigning those options to the element that was passed in. And you can see in here, we're passing in the ion alert uh, uh, component and the options that whatever options we defined that were of that alert options type. So at this point, it would make sense to have a look at the actual ion alert component itself rather than the alert controller. So let's jump back into the components folder. We'll open up the alert component specifically. And once again, we'll open up that TSX uh, file. And now in here, we'll take a look at what is happening. And so if we scroll down, you'll see all of the uh, the properties that were in that alert options uh, object type. You'll see all of those are set up as props here. 
And so if we scroll down, we can see things like uh, CSS class, header, subheader, message, all of the things we saw in that, uh, the type we just looked at before. And eventually we'll find uh, translucent, which by default is set to false. And we see the comment here, which says, if true, the alert will be translucent, uh, defaults to false. Uh, again, from this comment, we probably don't fully understand what that means still. So we can keep diving further into the code. If I just search for translucent in this file, we'll just go through everything, see what comes up. And we can see here that the translucent class member, this dot translucent is being used right here. And again, we might not understand fully what all of this is doing, but we kind of can kind of see here that you know, we have a, this class uh, object and then we're applying this uh, this alert translucent uh, CSS class if this is set to uh, true. Uh, so we can kind of see at this point that what that translucent property does is if it's true, it will apply the alert translucent class. Uh, if it's false, then it won't. And we could go even further than that uh, if we wanted to. We can really dive deep into this code. Um, something that's often useful is just to search the repository itself. So if I copy this alert translucent uh, class that I'm looking for, just scroll back up and just pop it into the uh, the search bar for Git here, uh, for GitHub brother. And we can search the entire repository for alert translucent. So now we can just see well, where is this class being used? Where is it created? And you can see we have two results here. One is the file we were just looking at that where the uh, alert translucent is being applied. Uh, but it's also being used in this alert.ios.scss file. So we could open that up now and we'll just search for translucent again. And you can see that uh, what is happening here is the alert translucent class uh, will affect this background and backdrop filter property uh, in CSS. And so in this case, we have the background being set to alert iOS translucent background color, and the backdrop filter is being set to alert iOS translucent filter. So a lot of the time, it's it maybe hard to find your way around the source code in here, especially if uh, you're newer to, I to Ionic. And even if you're more experienced, if you're not used to the code base behind Ionic, then it's going to be hard to find your way around. Uh, but it is a good idea just to try, start getting familiar with it, browse around the various components. If you get stuck, just search for something related to what you're doing in here, and maybe something will pop up. Uh, the good thing about being able to uh, browse through the code base in this way, even if you don't understand it fully, uh, is that you know what you're looking at is completely up to date. And ultimately, this is what is running uh, your application. Um, so you will definitely be able to find uh, what it is you need to do in here somewhere. It's just a matter of finding it. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the first episode of Ionic Tips Weekly. Uh, I think this video will end up being way longer than I actually intended for this series. Uh, usually these videos will be you know, anywhere between two and five minutes long, but uh, maybe sometimes they'll go longer like this one. Uh, so if you did like this video, please feel free to like the video and subscribe. And you can also check out my, my Twitter and my book and stuff like that in the description. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you again next week.